Hi everybody. It is May, May 26, 2019. This short clip, Yuri Bezmenov, what he is saying in this clip, I think many of you now listening to this, it's obvious you witness it, you're experiencing this in your own lives with people in your community, your friends, your family. Yeah, we have been taken over. Now, just saying that, that is enough to get my fellow Americans to call me crazy and to attack me. And he says something very important right here. Well, let's see if you can pick it up, but I will emphasize it uh, when he says it. But in reality, the main emphasis of the KGB is not in the area of its intelligence at all. According to my uh, opinion and opinion of many defectors of my caliber, only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process, which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result, the result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind. Even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of, the, uh, of the United States society. And yet these people who have been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. And the Marxist-Leninist regime does not tolerate these people. Uh, they, obviously, they will join the links of dissenters, mm -hmm. dissidents. Yes. Uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be greatest shock for them, of course. 
The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards, as I mentioned. Okay, that was unfair, um, <laughs> made to say, let's see if you can, you know, uh, here, the most important piece of this, well, the whole, everything that he said in these four minutes and 27 seconds, every bit of it was really important. Um, but that piece, this little, little, little piece here. His experts would would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I'm Most of it is done by Americans to Americans from a lack of moral standards. Wow. How we have so contributed to the downfall of what could have been a really incredible country. Um, it is very sad that we have gotten to this point, but the lack of moral standards is truly key to uh, the destruction of a society. So many want to argue, oh, Americans have nothing to do, do with it. They're good and decent people. I'm sorry to tell you that is so untrue. You know, think about the times that you have been uh, so vilified or attacked by friends, family, co-workers, people in your community, neighbors, for simply saying the truth, for simply speaking some truth, whether it's uh, the truth about what's going on collectively or it has to do with your own personal relationship. And they who refuse to do any work to try to lift themselves up um, from whatever it is that they have done, instead they want to pull you down. They want to pull you down to their level. And because we have so many people like that, um, we end up demoralizing one another. Okay, what brought this about? Waking up and seeing this. FBI tapes reveal 40 MLK affairs laughed as friend raped parishioner. Okay. I saw this and it literally just... I didn't even click on to read the articles. Part of the agenda here to demoralize Americans is, is to take down everything that was good about our country those you revered trashed. See, this is the, the real problem of having a country that is very sick and diseased. And having in the bell curve, the majority of the population, the well adjusted to a deeply disturbed society. See, we need those people in the bell curve to begin to recognize that their well adjustment is sick. You can't be well adjusted to a disturbed society. So each individual needs to do that work of self-reflection and reevaluation of their beliefs and their myths and yeah, it's hard work. But if they don't do it, they continue on sick and diseased. And 
the more individuals who do do that work, we get closer to uh, getting on a road that will head us towards health. When we have the majority, though, refusing to look at what they are doing, how they're behaving, how they live, yada, 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 then we continue to head down on that road towards complete and utter destruction. And frankly, we are very, very, very close to that complete and utter destruction. So, what do you do with this? What do you do with this? Now, I've read enough to know, uh, like JFK and MLK, they were womenizers, womanizers, um, but here laughed as friend raped parishioner. My gut, my, my first response was, it's the FBI, I don't believe it, and then I, I realized I don't want to believe this. I don't want to believe this. I do not want to believe this. But I also understand our government and the lies. I understand, finally, evil and how it works. I have been the scapegoat of a severely narcissistic family for 60 years. And the severity of it left everyone in the nuclear family pathologically narcissist. The only reason I escaped was because I was designated the scapegoat. It took me literally about 55 years to fully grasp what I was living in the dynamic. Now it's not like you know I ever thought my family was healthy but I didn't I didn't get the full extent and like Scott Peck who in People of the Lie talks about narcissism the pathological narcissism being an evil I could not come to that acceptance to finally say okay it was an evil it's evil what I have been living with my own family now it's hard you know collective evil you know the country the government all you know those things at a distance it's much easier to accept when it's further away from you personally. It's very hard to accept your own mother is evil. And it did take me even longer to finally grasp what I had experienced my entire life and still do every single day. The reason I brought up Scott Peck in his book, People of the Lie, he, and this is a paraphrase, I can't remember verbatim, but he talks about how adult children will remain children until they finally grasp and admit who their parents were. Now, He's talking about pathological narcissism. Until those adults finally admit the evil with which they have been subjected to, they will remain children. And I have to say that I experience what he said as true. We will remain children until we finally face the truth. 
regarding the people in our lives, our own selves, we will not be able to see reality clearly until we see our own reality clearly and admit. Now, this is not about blame. This is about the truth. The truth. Now, a lot of people will say, oh my God, I can't believe you said that about your mother. Look, there are a lot of parents who are severely damaged. And it comes from their own experiences as children. When I finally understood that and really took it in, not just an intellectual understanding, but God, that my mother didn't become an adult and decide, you know, sit down with my father and say, okay, we came from healthy backgrounds and uh, let's just decide how we want to bring up our own children. Do we want to fuck them up <laughs> or do we want to raise them as we were raised in healthy environments? No, adults don't do that. My mother was severely damaged early on and she became an adult who, because she couldn't face her own well, for lack of a better word, demons inside. Because she couldn't face the horror and shame of her childhood. She became severely narcissistic and passed that on. So it continues to be passed on generationally until the individuals in that unit and here the familial unit until the individuals break the cycle of passing it along. Well, take that family unit and then spread it out into the greater society. So what we have now are an awful lot of people who are thoroughly screwed up and don't understand who they are. They've never done any of that work and they cannot see reality clearly. They can't see their own. They can't see uh, the collective reality in which we are living clearly. They can't see anything clearly. We have so many pathological narcissists and psychopaths in charge, in positions of power. The institutions have become so corrupted with that narcissism, meaning they're so not about truth, they're about their own agenda. Like the individual narcissist, you can take the collective narcissist in positions of power, they have their own agenda. The FBI has an agenda. All institutions in our country have been taken over. The education system has been taken over. Government institutions have been taken over. Um, corporations actually have been uh, taken over. We are now living in psychopathic hell <laughs> and the consequences of that are spreading wide and so many people are suffering from it. Okay, so the psyche, the individual narcissist. You know, I look back at my life and I've been in a tailspin. That's been my life. It's been a, just a tailspin. You know, it's, I, I look at the tornadoes. I'll be doing another weather video after this, but it, that's my life. Tornado. It's like, what the hell is going on? You're, you're, because that person at the helm of your unit, the mother who is severely narcissist, a lot, and malignantly so, the lies, you just, you go through life and everything is about trying to understand your own life experience and it takes decades of work 
and but they're piling on the lies as you're trying to understand the lies you know, from the past and trying to get to the truth they just keep piling it on piling it on piling it on and your life is literally just spinning you're 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 trying you know to be like everybody else and you're trying to you know uh, become that you know uh, productive uh, citizen trying to do things right but it's like they toss you into they toss you into this spin of lies they involve other people um, those people believing them over you and there's and it's like they're burying you alive in lies where you just don't know what the hell is going on you can't make sense of anything you have been thoroughly trashed by those lies you can you're you're so wanting you know to break out of it but they continue and continue and continue that's what we've been living collectively so here a man who is revered around the world trashed and this is what the malignant narcissist does they trash people who are good with lies they thoroughly destroy their reputation they take away everything that was good about you and replace it with just the most degrading um, bits of information that literally rewrite rewrite your history rewrite who you are rewrite reality uh, and it's not just the malignant narcissist when we've grown up in it's kind of like growing up in one family unit right you have the family everyone is affected by what is going on in that family so you have a family that is severely diseased and and abusive and the neglect and you know you know the stories but it affects everyone you can't you cannot become an adult unaffected so that's the pathologically narcissistic family the pathological narcissist but the truth is is that in that bell curve the majority are coming from unhealthy dysfunctional families and much of the dysfunction can be put into those uh, characteristics of the narcissist so you have a lot of adults that have this narcissistic and even psychopathic these tendencies they're not pathologically narcissistic but they have narcissistic tendencies and if they don't weed out those tendencies well then they become the affected uh, individual that they don't because they don't do the work necessary to weed out those tendencies they don't even know how to think um, properly and they begin to take in information that works for them so in videos that I posted on um, Martin Luther King Jr. I was surprised to see so many people who wow trashed me and trashed Martin Luther King as just being part of the elite and you know he was 
um, part of uh, the takedown, and he was a communist, and all of this kind of stuff. So when I looked at that, I thought, wow, how many people are going to be looking at this and using that to confirm their bias? A lot. A lot of people. A lot of people will look at this and be really shocked. Laughed as friend raped parishioner. They don't understand the thoroughness of the disease in our country. They don't understand all of the agendas to socially engineer Americans into demoralization so that they will not be able to know what is right, what is wrong. They will not be able to decipher the truth because it's been so trashed itself. But everything that we have known, everything that we have revered, everything good about us collectively will be trashed. And we will have no reference point to even know anything. I hope I hope what I've said made sense. And that's why it's so unbelievably important for the individual to do the work on themselves. So they begin to put themselves on a road that is, that will bring them more clarity about the truth. That they will be able to see this headline and think, okay, all right, I don't want to believe it, I do not want to believe this, but I don't know. That's where we stand. I can't say it's not true. I didn't know Martin Luther King Jr. personally. I would have to have known him personally. To know if that was true. But the fact of the matter is, is that I've had too many experiences with people who I have known personally, who I thought were a certain way, and then they turned out to be something different. Now, my, my knowledge of the King family, my, my understanding of Martin Luther King, my understanding that no person is is perfect. My understanding that yeah, he could have had affairs. Of course. Why, you know, people have affairs. But laughed his friend, raped parishioner, and forty affairs. See, this man was well <laughs> jailed and very, very busy. Um I find it hard to believe that he had 40 affairs. But that he had affairs, yeah, I could believe that. I just, the, this is extreme. This is so extreme. And I know narcissists because it's my mother. And her lies about me have been the complete opposite of who I am and how I live. Complete opposite. To the point where she's, she claims that I am an active alcoholic and I don't drink. I haven't for many, many years. But the story is that I am a, a violent, mentally ill drunk. And I am not violent. My mother is very violent. So what they do is project onto other people their own failings because they can't accept it within themselves. And, well, it's the truth teller that gets trashed.
guess what? This man was an incredible truth teller. Okay. So, my not wanting to believe it, years ago, I wouldn't have even gotten to the point where I, I got, I was aware that I don't want to believe it. I would just not believe it. And then decades ago, I would have looked at that and gone, holy shit, and believed it. Because then I was still believing all of the deranged sick people because I was deranged and sick. But now, decades later, having done a lot of work, all I can say is I don't know. I'm going on the side with supporting Martin Luther King because he has demonstrated his life to us. He demonstrated yes he demonstrated it in his actions he demonstrated who he was now could there be other parts that were not demonstrated publicly yes but when you take in the full character of a human being and you have information that is so counter to it that's when you have to stop and say okay all right let's look at the two here let's look at the two people the FBI and MLK who are you going to believe I go with MLK because the FBI has also demonstrated what it is. But everything revered will be trashed. Everything that we have known will be turned upside down. Now I'm just going to read some of this. The Zionist Communist Takeover of America 45 declared goals. These goals were read into the House, uh, read into the, the uh, Congressional Record in 1963. And if any of you don't know about this, I link below and you can read up on these goals. But remember, I remember even as a kid, you know, oh, the McCarthy era and the communists and reading them out of Hollywood and all these institutions. And yeah, it was a real threat. And then we were socially engineered to forget that threat. Forget it. Ignore it. Because we were told it was no longer a threat. That threat still existed. And when you read these goals, you see, okay, I'd say now about 90% have been fulfilled. But I do want to get to um, you know, the infiltration of the press. The infiltration of the press. Right here. Um, gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. Control art critics and directors of art museums. Our plan is to promote ugliness, repulsive, meaningless art, and everything has just been trash for a very long time in our country promoting ugliness taking someone who was uh, someone so revered of moral character and making them ugly that's what the narcissist is good at break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography, obscenity in books, magazines. We've lived it. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs. So, when I had read these 45 goals, and this was many years ago, and all of a sudden, I'm picking up the New York... This was 
before I gave up the New York Times, uh, which was many years ago, but it was after 9-11. And I read in the New York Times an editorial about how the Constitution was outdated, and I got it immediately. The, the Constitution is outdated. Wow. So more and more did we see that you know, in different words, in different language, but essentially the same. The Constitution, we need to get rid of it. It doesn't suit our modern needs. It's a hindrance to cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. Inadequate, old-fashioned, get rid of it. And we have seen more and more people coming out saying that. And you look at the socialists, the socialist wave that took over in many states, in, in Chicago, uh, AOC, Alexandria, Ocasio-Cortez, socialists, Bernie Sanders, people, hey, I want the socialists. So, we are, we've been taken over. Discredit the American founding fathers. Present them as selfish aristocrats who had no concern for the common man. Well, I think all of you will get, wow, that's what they've been doing. That's right. White aristocrats who were selfish, who were slave owners, who and we do hear a lot of the awake people saying the Constitution, you know, it was written by these aristocrats. We've always been, always, 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 no, no, no. You know, we were the United States of America, united with a small U which meant that every state had its own sovereignty. When we became the big U, that was the beginning of our end. <laughs> so that big U was corporate America and the beginning of the federal centralization. And when you have a government that centralizes power and takes it away from the states, that's when you know that, okay, you're going down. Because centralization of power is tyranny. So the Constitution has been trashed. The Founding Fathers have been trashed. All we revere trashed. And then, you know, and this, please, if you don't, if you've never taken a look at these goals, take a look at them and you will see, oh my God, discredit the family, encourage promiscuity, an easy divorce, no fault divorce, right? Uh, emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents. Government knows better than the parents dominate the psychiatric profession and use mental health laws as a means of gaining coercive control over those who oppose communist goals. Yes, we're mentally ill. We're mentally ill. See, the people who are mentally ill don't have that label. The narcissist, so severely mentally ill, but because of their, uh, their own mental illness, they can go through life and appear as if they're just wonderful and charming and beautiful and, and they target someone and break them to the point where they begin to exhibit behaviors that then can be classified as mentally ill.
So take that individual and then put it into institutions. And that's what we have. And when you know about the communist, you know, Soviet Union, they, um, you know, the dissenters were thrown into psychiatric institutions. That's happening here in our country now. I also want you to take a look at New World Order plans exposed by Insider in 1969. So a lot of you know this. I've brought this document into play in many of my videos. It was one of, uh, it was Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan who in 1969 attended a lecture by Richard Day and Dr. Day, professor of pediatrics at Mount Sinai Medical School in New York. Uh, who had previously served as the medical director of Planned Parenthood Federation. And you know that certainly back in the day, everybody uh, was fooled about Planned Parenthood. You know, it, it's founding based on eugenics. Um, so Dr. Day gave a lecture in 1969, and everybody in, in a lot of medical students, they were told to uh, not record, no pens, no papers, um, and he revealed what the insiders were going to be doing to our country. And if you read this document, you will see, okay, it's been done. 90% of what they wanted to do has been achieved. So I just want to go to what I highlighted here um, in purple here. People will have to get used to change. People will have to get used to change. The idea of change. So used to change that they'll be expecting change. Whoa! Hits you right smack between the eyes. And you know what? I can't imagine how Coretta Scott King, the King family, could have maintained their dignity for a lifetime, having been subjected to such vilification. Oh boy, nothing will be permanent. Nothing will be permanent. Nothing will be permanent. Everything will be uprooted. Not just our physical landscape of the country, reshaping it into mega regions, but your everything will be uprooted. Everything that you believed, everything that you thought, everything that, well, it's, you will have no frame of reference anymore to understand anything. And when that happens, you cannot make any kind of rational decision that will bring you to a place of safety and security. Nothing will be permanent in the context of a society where people seem to have no roots or moorings, but would be passively willing to accept change simply because it was all they had ever known. This was sort of a contrast to generations of people up until this time where certain things you expected to be and remained in place as res reference points for your life. So change was to be brought about. Change was to be anticipated and expected and accepted. No questions asked. People are too trusting. People don't ask the right questions. People too trusting was equated with being dumb. And Dr. Donegan, who now has passed away, but he continued to say that when he recollected this lecture for this transcript, he continued to say that Dr. Day repeated this an awful lot. And when I look at that, yes, being too trusting was equated with being too dumb. 
um, when I was trusting of my own mother, that's when I was degraded. She looked at me as if I was just so stupid. And the contempt would come. No joke. So the real and the stated goals, everything has two purposes. Everything has two purposes. Everything has two purposes. Everything has two purposes. I, I repeat that because everything that you hear coming out of government officials, leaders, Trump, and all of these people, AOC, um, or, or Casio Cortez, and Bernie Sanders, and Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump, and Pelosi, and all, all of your politicians, they have an ostensible purpose which will make it acceptable to people. And the second is the real purpose which would further the goals of establishing the new system. Everything has two purposes. So when you have liars, this is why I say do not believe liars because they always have a hidden purpose. But when it comes to, especially what we are living now, everything needs to be questioned. When you hear and read something, you need to question it. And if you go with it immediately, then you've got that confirmation bias going on. Now, just because the FBI is not to be trusted, does that mean that this should be just thrown out immediately? No. Because that is the tailspin of the narcissist, the tailspin that they create in life. You don't know. Because they do sometimes tell the truth. You know, that's why the truth is so unbelievably demanding, it requires so much time and effort, and it's exhausting. You know, the, 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 just the attempt to get to the truth is so exhausting. So, can I say, because I want to believe that this is not true? Can I just come out and say it's not true? No. And that breaks my heart because because I don't I don't want it to be true of a man that I had great respect for. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Now I don't put like oh, you're my hero in terms of savior. But uh, this, this man represents the good, the good part of our country. Do I want that to be trashed? No. No. The only thing that I can do is weigh these two entities, Martin Luther King Jr., the FBI, and I come out on MLK's side. That's all I can do. So always remember everything has two purposes and it's a very hard way to live you know it's very hard because we have many people in our personal lives who lie they having an agenda we've got our institutions you know from public school 
local government, state government, federal government, corporations. Uh, it's like we're living in such a saturation of lies that it makes life meaningless. You throw up your hands and you go, well, fuck it. You know, all I can do is do what I want. Well, this is not my agenda. Uh, I have to do what I believe is important and that's it. But a whole lot of people go, fuck it. I don't care. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have fun. I, that's it. Um, the most important work for every individual is to get themselves right. You know, that narrow road, um, natural law, live the principles that you speak instead of just speaking them. Um, and I actually think that the time that we are living now, that demands of us. It demands that we begin to get ourselves right. And that requires a lot of thinking, serious thinking about what you're doing, how you're doing it. Um, most people just believe that they're on a right path. No. Look, it's the individual unit in the aggregate that has manifested the reality of one's society. That means that we've got the majority of individuals who are screwed up. The majority. That means that every individual needs to be thinking, okay, well, I have to start wondering if I'm screwed up. In my thinking, how can I get my thinking more clear um, so that I can be a part of manifesting something, something that is healthy here? Um, this is the key as far as I'm concerned to you know everybody wants a solution but nobody wants to change and we, we will never get anywhere unless the individual changes now be the change you want to see um, do you want to live in a society that is honest truthful that means you have to be honest and truthful live honestly speak honestly and that requires you getting to your own truth um, So where is the other? No more security. Nothing is permanent. Streets would be rerouted, renamed. The, those that you revered will be trashed. The Constitution that was so highly praised and respected throughout the world, trash it. Trash the Founding Fathers. Among other things, this would contribute to older people feeling that it was time to move on. They feel they couldn't even keep up with the changes in areas that were once familiar. This is the physical uh, reshaping of our country. Um, areas you had not seen in a, whole, in a while would become unfamiliar. And I've had comments from subscribers who said that they now either going back to where they were brought up or still living in areas that you know they always have and they said the changes are so magnificent that it's just an unfamiliar area to them. 
buildings would be allowed to stand empty and deteriorate. Streets would be allowed to deteriorate uh, in certain localities. What are we living now with all of this, you know, people coming out and saying, look, what, you're not doing anything with the infrastructure, the drainage problems all over the country, flooding out streets, all purposeful. The purpose of this was to provide the jungle, the depressed atmosphere for the unfit. The unfit meaning those who uh, are incapable of surviving the madness. Buildings and bridges would be made so that they would collapse after a while. There would be more accidents involving airplanes and railroads and automobiles. All of this to contribute to the feeling of insecurity that nothing was safe. And this also contributes to a greater insecurity because this, this is going to the heart. This really goes to the core you know, of, of who we are. It's hard enough to deal with the physical changes. But wow. Okay. Now, I never thought in terms of, ooh, I'm an American, so I'm proud, you know, to have been, uh, you know, in the country where we uh, were able to, you know, um, manifest greatness, individually speaking. But yeah. You know, when I see others in other countries also, you know, talking about Martin Luther King, um, there's a certain amount of, I don't know, kind of attachment because there's a, we have something in common, just being American, but also loving the truth. So you rip that away when you lie about people who, who have demonstrated something so profoundly different than laughed as friend raped parishioner. You're left with no security. You just, how do you figure it out? Nothing is safe. And what it's also, what it's also revealing is, wow. And it will reveal itself on a conscious level if people have done some work on themselves and understand themselves. If people are so incapable and think on a very low level, um, they will, you know, Well, they'll simply believe it, but not recognize the ripple effect of this. The ripple effect of this is, wow, man, so we can't know anyone. We can't know anyone. And people can demonstrate who they are, but wow, we don't know. And that's true for everybody who is gaining some press attention today. Who are they? Well, we're not going to know, right? We won't know until 50, 60, you know, years later. That is in part. Yeah, look, yeah, they understand our psyche. Unfortunately, most don't understand their own psyche. They understand psychology. They understand the impact. That's why it's important for every individual to understand psychology, at least have some foundation in that field so that you understand the manipulations going on. You know, um, when you don't have any grounding uh, in certain, you know, fields like understanding propaganda, understanding psychology, understanding your own psyche and how they work, 
to get in there and move you around, then you're easily moved around. And shifting populations and economies, tearing at the social roots, people losing their jobs as a result of industry and opportunities for retraining and particularly population shifts would be brought about. That's We've been living that for decades. Population shifts were to be brought about so that people would be tending to move into the Sun Belt. And have I met people from the North here in South Carolina? Yeah. Well, guess what? Uh, they don't have any roots here. And they don't care too much about what's happening here. Where you have your roots, you care about what's happening. So moving the population around is a great way to, uh, well, you end up being able to do whatever it is that you want to do in local communities. So. As I read this again today, I thought about I thought about the Texas Triangle, knowing, because I've spoken to subscribers who live in Dallas area and Houston, um, and they talk about how the liberals have taken over. So population shifts brought to the Sun Belt, uh, they would be the sort of people without roots in these new locations and traditions, and they're easier to change. The traditions are easier to change in a place where there are not a lot of trans, uh, transplanted people as compared to trying to change tra tran <laughs> traditions in a place where people grew up and had an extended family and had roots. So they even talked, or he even talked about the heartland, the Midwest and carry that down to the Texas Triangle area where you've got a whole lot. You know, Texas, that was a red state. Look at all the red states that are changing. Suddenly their conservatism is going liberal. Well, Heartland, the Midwest, does not seem, does seem to have maintained its conservatism. This is back in 1969, okay, um, or actually it might be in the 80s, right, because this is when Dr. Duncan uh, met with somebody to describe, uh, transcribe his recollections of that lecture in 1969. So even 1969 or 1980, Midwest, the heartland, and Texas maintained its conservatism, but take away industry and jobs and relocate people, then this is a strategy to break down conservatism. When you take away industry and people are unemployed and poor, they will accept whatever change seems to offer them survival, and their morals and their commitment to things will all give way to survival. When you are in survival mode, well, um, if that individual has never, never spent any time in that reflective uh, mode, self-reflective, reevaluating how they're living, understanding who they are, they've never resolved any of their uh, issues that are related to their uh, childhoods, then you have people who get into survival mode and boom, morals, yeah, everything becomes, it's a very self-centering um, state, a condition, because it brings about a lot of self-centeredness. But if you've not done the work on yourself and you get into that, you can, you can become someone who can do anything because it's all about you and it's all about surviving. But if you have done some work, well, then you can maintain those morals that you've had. Um, that's why this work is so unbelievably important. Um, so we, we are now looking at many areas 
that were once conservative no longer. I can't believe how many Democrats are in Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, but I met a man who moved from Maine to South Carolina because Maine, where he was living, was so impoverished. You know, everything became about survival. Where can I get work? He found work in the mega region of uh, the Piedmont Atlantic mega region where you do have a lot of corporate um, jobs available factory, corporations, the big ones. Um, so he comes down to South Carolina. This man was so depressed. And he was, um, he just moved into an apartment complex that I used to live in. I only saw him a couple of times, but I could literally feel you know, how depressed he was. It was obvious in his affect, everything. He did not want to be in South Carolina, but he had to make money to support his family. He had no ties here. He had no social roots, no familiar roots, no roots. So what do you do? You work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, you wake up, you work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, you become more and more this robot and you don't engage because you don't have any roots no one knows you you're in a completely different place with a completely different culture and you become isolated boom great way so uh, great way to change uh, they've been quite successful and they don't they don't tear one another apart over stupid little uh, insignificant differences these people who are engaged in the takeover of the United States and the world but I'm an American so I do focus on this country they've been unbelievably successful because they come together and they focus on their objectives. We, oh, we just rip one another to shreds. Oh, you're not Christian? Oh, unsubbed. Oh, uh, you're white and I'm black and unsubbed. And you, oh my God, I can't believe that you actually believe in one little thing and I don't unsub and then I'm gonna post videos and trash you we have to pick ourselves up we have to become more intelligent we need to really work our minds and think better more clear become very aware of what we say and what we do and how we think because that's, they know how low most people are. And they work it continually to manipulate them. They know we're children. Many have done the work to become adults. But most are children. Yeah, in the truther community, in the awake crowd, certainly those who are sleeping and they know what to do to move us about like pawns in a game pawns in a game and I hate now seeing it witnessing it weather control huh. yep all right know how people respond making them do what you want People can carry in their minds and act upon two contradictory ideas at one time, provided that these two contradictory ideas are kept far enough apart. You can know pretty well how rational people are going to respond to certain circumstances or to certain information that they encounter. 
So to determine the response, you want you want uh, or you need only control the kind of data or information that they're presented or the kinds of circumstance that they're in. And being rational people, they'll do what you want them to do. They may not fully understand what they're doing or why they're doing it, but they'll do it. So that's why they come out with information. That could be a complete lie. And how will people respond to this, seeing this? A whole lot of people will be unbelievably upset, very sad. Most will believe it because they're still stuck in the matrix and, well, it's the FBI. Um, they know the ripple effect. They understand it. They understand when they flood out an area that people are in survival mode and they can kiss those people goodbye because in survival mode you're not engaging in research to learn the truth. You are doing everything to just survive. So, um, yeah. It's really important for us to do the work on ourselves. To make sure that when we are dumped into survival mode, that we don't lose our moral center. And that can only happen when you actually have a moral center that has been exercised like a muscle. It's exercised. So think about that survival, you know, when people are dumped into that survival mode. If you have not done any physical exercise, that survival mode is going to really be very hard. If you have been somebody who has um, you know, some health left and a uh, strong immune system and has some um, fitness physically, you're so much better. You're in such a better position to survive. The same with our morals and our psyche and our internal development. You remain a child. You haven't lived the principles that you speak because that's the exercise of the moral muscle. Living it. Giving up the lie. Not telling lies. Living honestly. Then you have strengthened that moral core within yourself. When you're dumped into survival mode, that moral core is still within you. People who haven't and have just talked the game and haven't lived their principles are so weak that dumping them into survival mode, they can become people that you want to be weary of. because they can do what is necessary in order to survive. And what is necessary could be stealing from you, killing you, fighting you, whatever. Okay, look guys, it's really I've received comments from people after I've posted videos where 
you know, I'm talking about that individual work and how, how it is the key to getting out of this nightmare. And I've received comments from people who say, well, you're also saying we've already been taken over, so what's the point? I, those are the people who are so low that they're not even getting how important this work is to the individual. It is really important what you do, what you say, how you develop as a human being in life. And it's important for your own soul, for your own soul. And if you can't understand that, and yeah, there are a lot of people who don't understand it. In fact, there are people, and I've met them, I've had friendships with them. They talk about, yeah, I understand that. But they do nothing. And some directly have come out and said, not interested. Not interested. More interested in just me, 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 me. So, um, yeah, I'll link below to both 45 goals and this transcript of recollections of Dr. Dun Dunnigan. Um, we're in trouble. We are in big, big trouble. So, I really do hope that people begin to take seriously Take seriously your own self. You are not a serious individual if you have not engaged in finding out your own truth. You are not a serious individual if you have not engaged in those periods of self-reflection reevaluating those beliefs and the myths. You cannot, you don't get there. You know, you can think you're serious because you're gathering all of this information about what is taking place and searching for the truth, but that truth is the collective truth. What about the individual truth? That's when you hit that road. That's when you are serious about yourself. You are not serious about your principles. You are not serious about your Christianity. You are not serious about Christ, God, spirituality, or anything if you have not done that work necessary to find out who you are, to stop your own lying, to engage in that work that will, yes, stop you from sinning instead of just believing you can go on sinning and you're still going to get into heaven. You are not serious if you continue on lying to yourself, deceiving yourself, living a pretense, and lying to other people. Your child. And yes, maturity didn't stop. Once you got your own place to live and got a job, maturity is not about hey, I have a job and I pay my bills. Maturity is not about, I own my house and I, I have insurance. And maturity is not about driving a car, wearing the kind of clothes that you're wearing. It is not about claiming that you're this or that. Maturity is not something that is a material package to show your neighbors and family and, hey, look at me, I'm a success. Maturity is about 
doing that work necessary to become a responsible, moral individual who engages in trying to make the world a better place, engages with their community. When they see something that is wrong, they can't not just sit back and allow that wrong thing to happen. They actually get up and they confront the wrong thing. They speak out. The children, they sit back and do nothing. Always expecting someone else to clean up the mess. The only people who are going to clean up this mess is each and every one of us. And that's the truth. <laughs>